Dorothy Simon sitting in for Jim Lakey over here at Cable Channel 3, uh, where we serve the St. John and Maxwell area. And you can always see us on the web 24 7, I like to say, at sandylandcenter.org. And we are located on the south side of the square. And today is Monday, the 23rd of February. And what can I say? It is a cold one. Over at the Weather Channel, they, they call it the Siberian Express. And they say the Siberian Express is the name given to the Arctic conditions that has gripped the air and is raging across the country. The record-breaking Arctic blast is sweeping across the central and eastern U.S., causing damage and killing at least 22 people, I'm sorry to say. The temperatures uh, are 20 to 40 degrees lower than normal, making this week the most intense Arctic outbreak for the 21st century. And over in Colorado, um, they're having up to a foot of snow, and as you go further west or all over at Denver, the Rockies, some places are having up to two feet of snow. Um, what is happening is that the hypothermia by which uh, the, the internal core body temperature falls down to be below 95 degrees centigrade has been blamed for these 22 deaths so far. So please keep warm, wrap up, put your scarves on, and thermals, and anything to keep warm, warm feet and warm hands. As the cold front is extending from the mid-Atlantic and moving westward to the southwest, it will move southeasterly to the southern tip of Florida, to the southern tip of Florida, so it's all across the country. And a second round of bitter cold will arrive later in the midweek in the, in the, the Midwest and um, where we are here, the Midwest and over the Central Plains. But right now in the square, it's a cold 10 degrees on the cloudy skies. And today, Monday, for the rest of Monday, it will remain partly cloudy with a few flowers of snow. And the high will be right at 24, with the wind coming in from the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, it will be partly cloudy with the low um, at 12 degrees Fahrenheit and the wind west southwesterly at 10 to 50 miles per hour. Tomorrow, Tuesday, it will be mostly sunny and the high will be a warming 44 degrees with the wind coming in from the west-northwest at 10 to 50 miles per hour. And uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday, it will be mostly clear with the light variable winds and the low at 21. And Thursday, the pattern will be pretty much the same as that. On Wednesday it will be very similar, but Thursday we will begin to see it getting a little bit cooler with intervals of cloud and sunshine with a high at 29 and the winds north northeasterly at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And Thursday night a few clouds from, from time to time with a low near 10 degrees Fahrenheit and the wind east northeasterly at 5 to 10 miles per hour. For the weekend, though, look out because it will be mostly cooler. On Friday, we will have a 20% chance of snow with a high at 26 and the low at um, 17. And Saturday and Sunday, we will have a 30 to 40% chance of snow with a high at 36 for Saturday and the lows at 26. And um, Sunday, we will have a 30% chance of rain with it being very cloudy and the highs a little bit warmer at 43. So we can expect some cloud showers for part of the weekend. Um, and today we want to talk about some healthy choices. And believe it or not, we're going to talk about water. Because water is essential for good nutrition. An article in the current issue of the Old and Boulders um, reminds us of the importance of water for, for good health. Failing to take in more than the body uses can lead to dehydration. 
Adult men should drink about 13 cups uh, or approximately 3 liters of water per day and women 2.2 uh, .2 liters or about 9 cups. Dehydration can sap your energy and make you feel tired. And the signs and symptoms of dehydration includes thirst, fatigue, headache, a dry mouth, little or no urination, muscle weakness, dizziness, lightheartedness, and believe it or not, uh, sometimes you feel like you're hungry, but you're really dehydrated. So consider making some good habits. Drink a glass of water with each meal and between each meal. Hydrate during and before exercise. And substitute a flavored or sparkling water for soda or alcoholic beverage with your social gatherings. Include water-rich vegetables and fruits in your diet, such as cucumbers, broccoli, lettuce, and watermelon. And non-caffeinated beverages such as milk, such as milk, fruit juices, and vegetable juices. Remember, though, um, too too much caffeinated drinks such as tea and coffee can cause dehydration. And as a person gets older, the body is less able to uh, send the to the brain signals of thirst. So. Um, don't depend on just feeling thirsty to say you are dehydrated because uh, that's not the, the only signal the body needs. Do not wait to feel thirsty to drink more water. Um, so mark your calendars. We have an uh, anniversary coming up for Dara and Keith Van Doren on the 3rd of March. And on the 5th of March, we have Kirby and Leah Christmas. Those are the two uh, anniversaries coming up. And then for birthdays, we have quite a few birthdays. Today, we have Trudy Risley. It's her birthday. Tomorrow, we'll have Phil Nassus on the 26th. And Wednesday, um, the 27th, it will be Jill Steinmetz, Everett Hudson, Quinton Jacobson, and Kyra Garcia. And on Thursday, we have David Harter. And March 1st, we have Trinity Garner, Mike Saylor, and Joe Cornwell. And the third, we have Sheila Fisher, Becky Trasher, and Dustin, Dustin Jeff Johnson. And the sixth, Jan Zimmerman, Chimi Norton, and Roger Russell. So quite a few birthdays coming up quickly. And if you'd like to send cards and uh, they are here before you know it, so get your cards and um, give these people a call and wish them happy birthday and a happy anniversary. That is so nice. And some community events. Um, the Ministerial Alliance want to remind you of their Lenten breakfast. They started on Ash Wednesday and they continue every Wednesday morning through Lent at 7 o'clock and it will be at the First United Methodist Church. The next one that's coming up is this Wednesday on the 25th. The Reverend Tom Harrison will bring the message. And on March the 4th, uh, Sister Catherine will bring the message, the, or the meditation. It's really a short meditation. And on the 11th, Pastor Ronald Broder will bring the meditation. So do come out. It's really quite a spirit filled hour um, at that Lenten breakfast. And there's breakfast, you don't have to make breakfast that morning, and you have good fellowship and good meditation. So do mark your calendars for all those events. And for people in the news, we just want to congratulate Chris Torrey. Um, a few days ago, the city mayor Julian Owen saw in Chris Torrey as a city's long-awaited and much-debated fourth full-time officer. Mr. Story is the current owner of the His Strength and Training Center. The hiring of a fourth officer will allow the city to provide more coverage around the city. Uh, a four-year resident of the city, Chris says, I have a passion for helping people. 
He also said, I enjoy living in St. John. I am happy to have the opportunity to serve and meet more people. So I am sure the city welcomes um, the additional security his um, appointment brings. And congratulations to you, Chris. Um, um, we're looking forward to working with you, the whole city. I speak on behalf of the city on that one. Uh, mark your calendars too for our weekly menus over at um, the Maxville Center. Tomorrow they'll be serving up a chicken pot pie, broccoli with biscuits and peaches. And um, then they will be serving up roast beef, mashed potatoes with gravy, and then three green salads. And on Wednesday they'll be serving up creamy, creamy noodles, green beans, mar marinated tomatoes, bread, and range of cookies and on Thursday they will be serving up a Mexican chicken, a uh, winter mix of vegetables, a tough salad, a tortilla chips and you always have the fixings that go with that, tea, coffee, milk and juice sometimes if you so wish. And over at the uh, the other center we will be serving up um, Chicken strips, mashed potatoes, cheesy asparagus, angel food cake, and pineapple. On a Wednesday, they'll be serving up fried potatoes, mixed vegetables, apple cobbler, and on Thursday, they'll be serving up pork fritters, stewed tomatoes, roll, brownies, and mandarin oranges. I sort of get hungry when I read the um, menu. Uh, I was hesitating there, so do. Um, in seriousness, if you need a hot meal, and I'm sure a lot of people would need one in this cold weather, call over at either centers and they would be happy to prepare a meal for you and get it over there. We have some good volunteers who have volunteered to deliver those meals. And if you are at home, can't do the fixings for yourself, they would be happy to do that. And our thought for the day. Hunt for the good points in other people. Remember, they have to do the same in your case. Have a good day and keep warm! <laughs> this is your story. This is your story. This is your story. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. But most of all, this is the greatest story ever told. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. I know you're going to enjoy the incredible journey you're about to embark on. The story is brimming over with tales of mystery, intrigue, adventure, of love, heartbreak, and triumph, of power, of struggle, and finally, of redemption. But remember, the Bible is not a hundred ancient, unrelated paintings, but a mural all knitted together to tell the story of God's great love for us and the extent to which He will go to get us back. I know you're really going to enjoy and appreciate this wonderful experience as you fully explore how we all fit into the greatest story ever told, God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. I'm Ray Davidson, pastor of First Southern Baptist Church here in St. John on the corner of Second and Exchange. We would like to invite you to come and join with us as we look at God's story, the story of God's interaction with man. We'll begin on September the 7th at 9.30 a.m. With, with a worship service followed by at 10.30 with Sunday School. This is a study for everyone in the family. All of the children, young people, adults will be studying the same lesson so that we can talk about it at home as we go through the week. We invite you again to come and join us on this 31-week study of God's story and man's story.